Hello and welcome back. I am Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more of our EU4 Tunisian Thievery campaign. Okay, so we're back and uh, I am now down one hard drive. Found the solution to my issue there, by the way. I do apologize. I did earn the... Uh, I just noticed this. The last episode, someone had commented saying, so I take it you earned the Sons of Carthage in the lost footage. And yes, I did. I couldn't remember what episode I got it in, but um, just to... to address it in the actual video and not just in the comment section or in the description of the previous video. What happened is I had a... I have three hard drives, right? They're two... they're two terabyte drives. I had them configured in a RAID 0 format for maximum writing speed. Um, read and writing speed, which is useful. One of the drives has failed. It was starting to show signs of failing, but wasn't actually fully failed, so it was still trying to do its job. And what happens when you have a RAID 0 format is uh, each of the drives will take roughly, in this case, one-third of each piece of data. So if you put, a say, a 30 gigabyte file uh, onto my, my data drive, right, which is a volume that I've established on my computer, roughly 10 gigabytes will be on each of those three hard drives. So the drawback to using RAID 0, uh, well, the advantages first. The advantages to RAID 0 is that you get much, much, much faster read and write speed since each drive is only having to be responsible for a part of each file. So all three drives can work on the same file at the same time, which is really good for big videos, um, really good for transferring data, really good for a lot of the stuff that I do. The drawback is that if even one drive fails, the data becomes corrupt because that portion of the data is gone. Now, I know, I know, before you comment down below that, hey, you should get RAID 1, right? You should use RAID 1, don't use RAID 0. I don't care. It's been three years since I've ever had any issues. I lost two videos. I'm not too concerned about it. I'd rather use RAID 0 for maximum write speed and read speed and uh, just deal with the fact that every couple years I might have a hard drive fail. So, um, anyway, I lost two videos that had uncorruptible, uh, they had corrupted, unrecoverable data, and then also while I was trying to upload those two videos that were corrupted, um, when it got to that corruption point in the video while I was uploading it to YouTube, my system froze and I lost two other videos that I was in the process of recording. I couldn't figure out what it was at first. I actually thought it was completely related to uh, something else. Um, I had just gotten the internet earlier on that day, and I thought, oh, maybe it's my, maybe it's my NIC driver or something. And but anyway, that wasn't what it was. So what I did is I ended up disabling that drive, uh, re-establishing the RAID zero volume, which is the two remaining good drives, and we're back to good. So unfortunately, now I only have four four terabytes of storage, which is overkill, but whatever. Anyway, so we have Sons of Carthage. I still the whole, whole purpose of this campaign was Sons of Carthage, and uh, Barbarossa. So we just need to get more light ships privateering. Um, and then I see, I guess we'll just go for whatever else we can, you know? I don't, I don't necessarily think I'm actually going to end this campaign right when uh, we get Barbarossa, because I'm going to keep this campaign going, I think, until the Rights of Man, or right, right, right of Man or Rights of Man comes out. So we'll probably keep playing for a while. Anyway, um, <clears throat> it's funny because my notepad, where I have everything written down, like what I'm supposed to be working on, I just have attack Castile, attack Aragon, attack Morsangali, attack Molten, attack Moldavia, attack Bohemia, like etc. It's just attack everyone, um, and then and then a few dates. But anyway, let's go ahead and uh, get back to playing the game. So that actually may have been part of the reason why the game was chugging for me a bit there toward the end as well. We're gonna grab this three siege guy and bring him over to here in just a couple days. Oh, never mind, he wasn't even necessary. But there is a level two fort there. Uh, let's grab him to here now and go that way. And you can head over that way instead. Oh, apparently, yeah, now... Now, he's not allowed to go here. Oh, he was never allowed to go there, never mind. Anyway, he suffered from Lithuania. Uh, we declined that offer. We have two free diplomats right now. One of them needs to go back to the Papal State, I remember that. 47 individual war score with you. Um, I don't even remember what I actually wanted. I know I wanted to move into the... Why are these white? I never, I don't remember seeing them white before. Anyway, I wanted to move into the Sevilla node more. We've got Alaska, California, and there's Lithuania, Portuguese Louisiana, Portuguese Peru, Rio de Prada. He, he's got a lot of colonies. Uh, if we make him weak enough, they'll probably all break free, which is about to happen. We should probably take a look at aggressive expansion. Okay, not too bad with most countries. I think we take a bunch of land from Portugal then. Clearly starting with things that we have claims on, so it'll be slightly cheaper to core. And then uh, prioritizing forts and coasts. Okay, uh, Algarve level 6. We definitely want to take Algarve, definitely want to try to take Lisboa. Um, want to get up to Porto if I can, because Porto is an estuary. Porto and Lisboa. That would give us most of the estuaries in this node. Yeah, pretty much all of them, in fact. 
It's 44 piece steel, 33.4 aggressive expansion. We end up taking on tons with a lot of people. Um, we have a truce with the Ottomans. We have a truce with... Uh, okay, so Castile and Aragon, we don't. They would probably join a coalition. Ethiopia, we have a truce with for a long time. Persia, we have a truce with. Portugal wouldn't matter because we're about to truce them out. Hungary is at... We, we could actually have Hungary attack us. Styria, the Papal State, no truces. Moldavia, Molten, no truces. Having Molten actually have enough. Well, he's in a different religious group. Maybe if we wait... let's. Well, obviously we're going to get a tick right now, so that's good. I think we start the next war with the most dangerous person who's likely to join, which is probably... It's either the Papal State or Aragon, I think. Molten, I'm not scared of at all. Papal State's already in a war. They are attacker against Salzburg in the Third Bavarian Purge. Let's check the ledger. So, the Papal State. Oh, they were at the top. Look at that. Yeah, they have 91,000 troops. I had a feeling that they'd be up there. We're allied to the Teutons still, if I'm not mistaken. And then the other one I wanted to consider was Aragon. Aragon has just 32,000. Tech difference, 25 versus 25. So yeah, I think we attack the Papal State. Try to go for Siena. Maybe we would attack you first. That pulls Styria in, we could get a separate piece with you. Just to pull in Burgundy, Bavaria, and Hungary. Styria went on the call right now, it's a great time to attack Castile. Plutocratic coup is on its way down. Um, don't think we need these generals over here anymore. So that's uh, Eunice. Eun Eunus. Grab Eunus over to here. Do you remember when they made it so you couldn't move generals around? I, I feel like whatever they did doesn't work anymore because I'm very clearly capable of moving generals around now. Not, not quite as uh, crazy as it used to be, but you, for some reason something seems to have backtracked and now you can do it pretty darn easily. So we got Eunice over there, we got you doing that siege, that's valuable. We've got this guy up there, we're gonna take that fort. And we got you taking care of that fight, that's good. I was preparing to attack Persia, or Molten, one of the two. Lithuania. It's not an estuary, oh it is an estuary. It's upstream of us and we don't have a merchant, so it doesn't really benefit us because most of the steering is gonna still be forced that way. But there are four people pulling in this direction. If we could just kill Chernigov, straight up. <laughs> the whole of Chernigov, then uh, that would stop steering in that direction. 55 peace deal. Not too much more aggressive expansion. 337 points. We can't core at all, and I think we're still behind on points right now as is. But that's not going to stop me. How are we doing on relationship slots? 5 out of 6. And we only have, we have military access to Aragon at the moment, so that's not necessary. I could create a vassal up here. Call it Western Tunis. That way we would have we would have Northern Tunis, Southern Tunis, and then Armenia. Can I rename Armenia? I don't think I can. I'd much rather you be something else. Rename Nation. No? Damn. Okay, they still have lots of land to core. They haven't cored, they've got territorial cores, but they haven't full cored everything. They should, eventually. Alright, just trying to get my bearings straight. It's been a little while since I played last. We're supposed to take Bender. But that's a separate war. Moldavia. Ooh, Austria won't defend Moldavia. This would pull in Chernigov and Nitra. Nitra doesn't matter. Taking Bender is only five development. That is definitely something I want to do just to get the mission. All right, I'm going to let the game run for a bit. We're going to let some aggressive expansion tick down. January the 1st, I need to remember to spy in the Papal State for tech bonuses. Got to keep watching for ships because I think Portugal, yeah, they pieced out. So they're bringing their navy back probably. And uh, they do have 20 heavies. They get a lot of money from trade income, a lot of money coming from their vassals. We make more than anyone right now, but Portugal is still up there. 78 ducats. 25 ducats a month from tariffs. Look at all those guys. Uh, recruited ministers expired. They've lost a lot of influence. We should check these things out for now. Only 41% influence on the emirs. Mm. Might as well grant generalship to get them back up above 60. Even though I don't really need their general, and we have better army tradition than they can provide, but still. Let's grant generalship. We want to sack some prestige to make these guys stronger. Definitely not. They're already above 75% influence. Uh, don't want to do any of these things. Don't want to do that. Alright, our new general is a 2-2-2-2. Two, 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 two. 
That's really bad. Goodbye, some guy named Usman. Wait a second. I thought we already moved an Usman. No, it was Eunice. That's right. Get rid of the 2222. I just want the influence. It'd be really cool if there were states you could toggle or flag saying, I don't ever want to make this into a thing. Like, don't show me this one for this one thing. It's like, I, I, I want to have that alert up there, but I don't actually want to do those provinces. Uh, Hainan has accepted peace with France. Full, full annexation. He is still at war with Salzburg. So he separate peace Hainan for full annexation. Interesting. Our siege takes to 34 days. Alright, that's a 21 day siege of this guy. Nice. It is January. Let's go ahead and do uh, build spine work on Pipple State. We're at 21. We need to get higher. If we were to attack you. You are Catholic Catholic. So I'm already pissing the Catholics off a ton. I think I'm walking into another coalition here if I don't be careful. What I might do is just attack these people for the sake of driving up the... Uh, driving the, the truce timers. I don't have enough admin points to core at all. I really only care about moving directly into the Genoa node right now, so I think we will create a new client state over in, in this area. We want to create one in Italy as well. It would allow me to expand more into the east, where I think we have less overall aggressive expansion. I say we keep everything that's in the, uh, the Genoa node for ourselves. So we can try to work in that direction. So we take Napoli, which is a lot of development. It's going to be a lot of aggressive expansion. But then we could create a client state up here. And then feed land from the Papal State as well. I think it's time, right? It's time to just go nuts. Also, the only thing stopping me from getting uh, Barbarossa is uh, I need to have 500 light chips. We have 345 right now. we got room for another few. We do have a little bit of money. I could build some ships. How much money are we making right now from raiding? We're getting, uh, 29 ducats. 20 ducats a month from Spoils of War in Genoa. Not bad. How does the Genoa note even look, anyway? But look at that, piracy, 65%, it's pretty cool. 525 guns in pirate hunting, 5,600 guns privateering. That is funny. Alright, yeah, let's just add some ships to this. We'll go um, slightly above the force limit. I want to keep a little bit of money for in case we actually need the, the nest egg, you know, there to kind of pay for some stuff. Take care of that. I will start playing faster, I promise, as we get closer and closer to uh, me knowing what the hell's going on on the map. We can turn these forts off. We're not going to attack Aragon just yet. I'm a little minor bit concerned about France. Let's turn this fort off. Still got to pay attention to the Portuguese Navy. Uh, down here, we don't need these forts. Don't need those forts. Um, if we go to war with you, probably don't need those this Constantinople fort, but it's a cheap one, so we might as well keep it on. Alright, I think the next war we declare then is probably going to be this Castilian War. Let's grab our other three siege guy. <clears throat> this fella. We'll have you positioned in Bessarabia. We'll have three siege guy over here. We'll grab our light fleet. You guys I do want to keep on the Aragon border. So we'll go to Leon, and we'll go down to La Mancha. These were light ships that I had branched off from the fleet protecting trade in Aleppo. We'll just go back to Aleppo then. Make sure, yeah, 94% control without protecting trade. There's no reason to protect trade in our capital. Not our capital, our, our primary trade area. We've got maxed out relations with Armenia. I wanted to integrate him. We can do that as soon as we go to peace. The problem is that if I go to peace right now, we're going to have some issues with uh, the coalition, I think. Well, in theory, if I had two diplomats free, I could peace out and then immediately declare... I would need to have three diplomats free. One to send the peace deal, one to start the integration, and one day later to declare on Castile. And it's not even Castile that I really want, it's the Papal State. So we probably declare on the Papal State and then a month later, we declare on Castile. Castile's not going to bring anyone else in. The Papal State's going to bring in everyone that they're allied to, which is people that don't matter. This siege is going to be worth quite a bit. And then, annoyingly, Portugal has decided to build a level 6 fort on the Azores. How annoying is that? I'll give you an answer. It's very annoying. 
Nuremberg will pay France war reparations for 10 years with no CB. Alright, so yeah, he attacked Salzburg, not that other guy. That is one of our three siege guys. How many three siege guys do I have? I thought I had appointed two three siege guys over there, but apparently one of them is only two siege guy. Alright, that's good. That's fine. Okay, 108 admin points is what we need. So I was looking to take all this land, um, but I can't core any of it right now. The land that I still have, that I even still need to core, is land that's in our capital node. Capital trade node. So I think I'd rather core these first. So I think everything we take from Portugal, we'll just create a client state with this. And their overall development's way too high, I think, to take any extra. So we don't have to worry about the coring cost of any of this peace deal. That 337 points will be fine. The aggressive expansion will be fine. We'll need to be... Well, you know what? Yeah, I, still, I need three diplomats still. So... Let's come back from Armenia. Let's probably come back from the Papal State as well. There goes Lisboa. Which is great, because now I can take the three siege guy back over to where I want him. For real. Is there a way to get to your fort? If we come in from this direction, we'll get forced to that fort. If we come in from Cuenca, we should be able to just move there. Go to Cuenca. <clears throat> Let's cancel military access here soonish. Bring the heavies up into this area to deal with the uh, the Papal State. Pretty happy with the army composition right now. I'm also pretty happy to see uh, flexible negotiation come in. That'll make it easier to piece this guy out. Nice. Let's go ahead and take it right now. Okay, now it's only going to cost us uh, 43 piece deal. Did that actually recalculate, or was that... I swear that was 43 a second ago. Lisboa, Antejo, Algarve, Porto, Coimbra, Yedisan. 43. Let's see if that actually is correct. It is. Yedisan's 10 whole war score, probably because I didn't make him a co-belligerent. It's not very much. What if we just did the separate piece, pay the dip? 15 Diplo points. Make the peace deal with uh, Portugal easier and to off offset some of these truce timers. I think that's probably worthwhile. I'm not really too concerned about you, but... Uh... So that's that war done. Need three diplomats free. We have 25 war score, medium enthusiasm. Probably going to be low soon. We'll just wait for his aggressive, his war exhaustion to come up, and then he'll do it a lot easier for me, I think. These three armies are all just going to stay over here in preparation for a future war with Aragon. These two armies are maybe actually not sufficient to deal with the Papal State, come to think of it. So hold on, let's actually pull one of these other guys over. In fact, we'll probably take two of them over. 64,000 troops, and my navy has 57 boats. I don't think we're building any more boats. I'd love to have enough boats to move two at a time. Yeah, I think we want to have four of these armies over here. Supply is 45 and 42. We can drop off... Um, Got a level two coastal fort in Nice. Wouldn't mind landing some troops in Corsica and then taking the navy for a moment, bearing some troops over to Nice. That'd be an easy fort to take, easy to blockade. Austria will cede land of two. Pro oh, they just lost their capital, Wien. Now their capital is Ostmark. Total war score cost is this. Austria is down to a one province minor. Wow. I guess we're not too concerned about Austria protecting the papal state then, or whoever it was. I think it was uh, Moldavia. Yeah, Austria's gonna protect Moldavia. Very funny. Neat. And he's still the Emperor as well, which is hilarious. So he's probably still making some pretty good income, even though he's weak as hell. Austria... Nope. 1.16 ducats. He's... Phew. The Austrian realm is not well known. <laughs> the Emperor of the HRE is not well known. You heard it here first, folks. Alright. I am going to go ahead and take a short break here. 
But uh, I'll be back same time, place same, same time, same place tomorrow. Looks like we just got our third diplomat. He got sent home from France. But uh, yeah, this time with fewer lost files is the hope. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you soon.